Okay. Welcome back. I have a little bit of explaining to do here. Um, I recorded an episode earlier tonight, and uh, it just didn't go the way I wanted it to. I was bouncing around from a lot of different spots at Winding, and, and, and what I think I was struggling with a little bit internally was I really want this series to primarily be about feeder bottom fishing, which for me just happens to be the most fun part of that and and I got really stuck on that those bait fish which was really cool I mean if nothing else it proved to myself that there are other really viable cool ways that you can start this game from level one and have a lot of fun however I don't really want this series to be about float fishing and I don't want it to be about um, catching you know, bleaks and all that stuff. And, and I was having a hard time switching from all of that that we were doing to get more on track with the feeder fishing. Um, so I fished a little bit more on winding and then I came here to uh, Mosquito, caught a bunch of rough, filled a cafe order for rough. And I basically put together a second feeder rod. Okay, so let's go ahead and first of all, let's talk about the basics I, I really haven't done this yet in this series and I think we're early enough that it's okay to do that this is a um, very basic feeder rod it's the Sorrento feeder 130 it's very inexpensive you can get one of these the moment you come into the game at level one you can use that initial silver you get to buy one of these and the whole thing, you could put the whole thing together for a very, very a re reasonable amount of silver. I can't remember the exact cost. Maybe it's like 50 silver or something. Uh, and by the way, the other thing we did was we went ahead and purchased, and I'll show you this in the store. Um, you know, we had saved up 150 silver to purchase this, which is actually the feeder kit. And this is a more advanced feeder, slightly, than that beginner feeder. And so we'll be able to do a little bit more aggressive fishing with this one. And um, next we just have to decide what we want our third feeder to be. And that's what we'll be saving up for. But first we wanna take care of some other basics. Okay, when you first get um, a rod, any type of rig that you're putting together uses this same method. This happens to be a feeder rig. So when we look at the different rigs that we can change by clicking on uh, this change button, we see all of the bottom fishing rigs that are available, including the carp focused rigs, which hopefully we'll get to later, way later down the line when we've leveled up and gotten some better equipment. But for now, we're going to be doing basic bottom fishing. And um, then you just start putting stuff on your on your rig and, and you'll sort of buy each one of these. Unless you get a kit, you'll buy each one of these pieces separate. So we've got a Spark 3000 that we're going to put on there. The difference in the 2000 and 3000 has got a little bigger reel so we can get a little more line on there. Now, if you'll notice the max drag, sorry, the max load capacity of this rod is 4.6. Your rod should always be strongest. And then the second strongest thing should be your reel. When you're first starting out for the basics, try to stri stick to this pretty strict. If you're a higher level player and you make a low level account or if you're just using much you know fancier gear then obviously sometimes you you overload your line a little bit all that kind of stuff and in fact what we have is this 3.1 line so technically 3.1 is slightly higher than the reel that's not great that means we might be causing a little bit more damage to the reel it's even possible that if enough weight goes on our rig from catching that trophy gibble or whatever then we could break the reel but these reels are so cheap, I'm not really worried about that, but I just wanna make sure you know that the reel technically should be stronger than your, than your line. And then we're gonna throw a bite indicator on there. This is you know, a, a, a feeder rod. Now, when it comes to the sinker, if you wanna use ground bait, you gotta put a cage on there, but both of them have weight. So they're both doing the same thing. They're gonna sink your rig, the line on your rig down to the bottom because this is bottom fishing, right? And so um, we have made some basic ground bait. All this ground bait has in it is crackers, and I will show you how to make ground bait in just a little bit. We don't, we don't have a leader. You know, we haven't gotten into using leaders yet, although when we do, our fishing will probably improve, especially in some places. 
and then we'll put a hook on here. We want to put a pretty small hook. Um, we can go with 16 for now and just kind of see how that goes, see if that's manageable. Um, although some of that is dependent on where we're going to be fishing. And then I think we're just going to fish with basic bread. Uh, I'm thinking we're going to go down to that Crucian Gibble spot. There will be a lot of opportunities for us to fish for rough. So I don't know that we'll do that tonight. But um, So if you look in the cafe order, I, I already filled this rough order. And we'll get into the places to... There's really one place right now that it's my go-to place to fill, fill rough orders. But I think at Mosquito, you always want to check if there are rough orders. Those are some of the easiest and most lucrative low-level cafe orders to fill. So keep an eye for that, okay? Now, um, we're gonna purchase a couple things here because I wanna show you the importance of um, three systems. Uh, cooking, bait harvesting, and ground bait. And especially cooking and bait harvesting have a relationship with each other um, because of the energy you need to do it. So to get this started, we will need uh, to make a little bit more silver, I see. Um, so for now, let's just get the tea kettle. And as soon as we can afford it, we'll come back and get the shovel. But with the need, we need the tea kettle to do some cooking, right? And we already have some firewood that we bought earlier. And we already have the matches, right? So we can start the fire for crafting. So we have the tea kettle. Now the other thing we need is some tea. We're going to be crafting tea, which will give us energy that will allow us to uh, dig for worms initially to start leveling up our bait harvesting. And we're going to be doing that like crazy because we'll get so many points early. Every time we dig, pretty much, we'll get points, okay? So here is a pack of tea uh, for 612. That gives us 10. We're going to go ahead and do two of them. And so that'll give us a bunch of tea to start off with. We already have a few eggs we can cook. Um, we'll be able to cook sausages soon, so let's grab some of those. And we need to make lots more bread. So we're going to spend four silver on a bunch of bread as well. Okay, so that should get us started. I think we have, um, I, I'll eventually want to get some bigger hooks. But, oh, let me show you this kit real quick. I think I showed this in an earlier video. If you're new to the game, one thing they added fairly recently is, is uh, a lot of the different types of fishing now, feeder included, have these combo kits and the one that we were saving for and, and purchased is this 149 uh, feeder set so this is our stronger of our two feeder rigs this is the stronger one comes with the comma comfort now its load capacity is six kilo right so the other well, other one I showed you is much weaker this is going to be a nicer rig for us it comes with a Lacerti S it's a very inexpensive early reel but it holds a pl special place in our heart because you do a lot of early fishing on it and uh, you'll even come back to it at times when you're going for really small fish if you hold on to it. It came with some 4.8 uh, kilo line. So again, the line's a little weaker than the reel. I wish it was a little closer, like if it was 5 kilo line, that might be a little better, but it's what it comes with, so we'll use it. It did come with a sinker, um, but we've purchased a cage so we can use ground bait, a size 14 hook, and bells. So basically, when you unpack that, you have a full feeder set ready to go. Okay, so let's go check out this spot down here. I think we're going to use bread on both lines, but the um, ideally our stronger line will have a little bit bigger hook, see if we can catch a little bit uh, better fish. The bite rate down here is really good. Uh, bread should work good here all night long. And this is the spot right here, okay? 45, 63. Really anywhere between these lilies is where I like to put it, even just slightly past the lilies. Uh, it ends up working out really well. And uh, let's get this set up. So let's see what size hook we do want to use. It looks like 14 is our biggest. Let me see what's on this one. What did we have on here? 16. So for now, we'll just be okay with that. Let's get our first line out there first. Let's stay in order. We've got 14 with bread. Um, Again, this is just like basic cracker ground bait, but I'm going to show you in a minute how to make ground bait to actually target the, the uh, crucian and gibbles, which is really what we're going for here. I'm going to do a seven meter clip because I certainly don't want to go farther than that. 
that will often cast shorter than that because really anywhere in between those uh, those lilies is a good place to go. And I think this one's already set up with how we want it. We just set up this rig a minute ago. So let's do seven meter on this as well. And let's put this right out here. So we've got bread on both lines. And the reason why I'm using bread to start off with is because it is a very cheap uh, bait. And I wanna show just how good it is as a bait. We're already getting a bite here. So let's see what we've got before we start some of our cooking exercises. In fact, while we're here, um, looks like we've got a couple fish on. So here's our first fish out of this spot. Ooh, let's increase our friction break a little bit. And there's a roach. And that is a nice, big, fat roach. And I don't know, for me, this is where the fun is at, is feeder fishing, getting a good start with your, uh, with your bottom fishing here at Mosquito, and, uh, and then just building on it. And part of that are all these different systems. So let's talk about ground bait. If you hit in, that's how you cook. If you don't have a fire, at least. That's how you make leaders much down the line. You won't be making leaders till much longer. That's how you make lures. Again, something you probably won't do early, but you'll do that eventually. But more importantly for us right now, um, that's how we'll make ground bait and then baits. There's that bread. But for ground bait, you can select regular ground bait, you can name your own recipes, um, or, and then, and then you can add whatever you want, like we could add crackers and porridge, sunflower oil, and that would just happen to be the same recipe, because they also have some pre-programmed recipes, and these recipes all tend to work really well. So for Christian, Christian Gibble Carp, we're gonna use this recipe. It comes with, we need ground crackers for it, millet porridge, and sunflower oil. I think we can make two or three stacks. Okay, so there's one stack. Actually, this is something I wanna do. We've got some fish on here, by the way. This is a nice big crucian. Look at this big fat boy. 855 grams. See, we're getting it out there a little further, but that's okay. All right, let's see what's on this guy. Another roach. Let's reposition this first rod. That was really sloppy the way I put that down. All right, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna put um, a couple of points in ground bait. Remember we leveled up all those times? Well, every time we leveled, we were getting uh, skill points and I haven't put any in because we really hadn't gotten started yet We were doing all those experiments with the bleak and the gudgeon and the dace, but now we're really getting started I'm gonna put two points in ground bait. I Really like three points in ground bait uh, The question is how many harvesting bait points? I'm gonna put one point in harvesting baits. This will help us get um, higher success rate and more worms I think we'll live with one point in harvesting baits and let's put a third point in ground bait. And then the rest of our points are gonna go for now in fishing with a feeder rod. So four points straight down. That gives us casting distance and accuracy and control of the fish more and more and more all the way down to seven. So a really good place for early points for us to be in. And the reason why I stopped and went ahead and put those points in for the ground bait is because, all right, we're gonna put this whole operation on hold here. There's a certain amount of randomness to the ground bait you make. So I'm hitting I for inventory, going to ground bait, and this is that Crucian Gibble ground bait we made. Look at the quality of it. Three out of 10, really low quality. Now that we have points in making ground bait, our chances of making higher quality ground bait goes up a lot, okay? This is 10 out of 10 quality. It's gonna be much more effective. I think that's probably the last stack we can make for now. Oh, yep, so we're out of millet porridge. But we have one stack of 10 out of 10 and one stack of, uh, of three out of 10 quality. 
All right, so let's put that on there. 10 out of 10 on the number one uh, rod. And we'll go ahead and put that Crucian Gibble nine, uh, three out of 10 on the other one. And y'all have seen how fast the bite rate is here. It's really crazy. Like when you have all three of your feeders set up, it is just, it's a great place to, to fish. It really is. And, uh, and at night, it's the best. It's good during the day. You'll level up your bottom fishing really fast, but the big boys come out at night. Uh, we might even pop a line on that weak rig. You never know. Okay. So, um, let's go ahead and start our fire and let's get some crafting on. I'm trying to watch our fish, how many fish we catch. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to afford the shovel this time, but I can at least describe it. Um, okay, so you hit Y to start the fire as long as you have wood and matches in your inventory. We already cooked all the baked potatoes we can. But what we're really here to do is craft tea, right? And this is going to level up our crafting. That's an annoying sound, isn't it? It's going to level up our cooking skills, sorry. Let's make five of these and then go check our lines. So once we have the shovel, we have to have full energy to dig. And energy is going to be the top of those four lines that you may be able to, that you can see in the bottom left hand part of the screen. So there are four lines. There's energy, hunger meter, overall health, and comfort level. The reason why our comfort level is so low is because of the rain. And so T will get your energy back up and slowly raise your comfort some too, although this rain will keep lowering our comfort. But the reason why we get tea is so that we can keep getting our energy up as fast as we can so that once we have the shovel, we can use that energy to dig. We'll dig up worms and red worms early on. And almost every time we dig, uh, we'll get points in harvesting baits, which will allow us to eventually make pearl barley, which is huge, so important. I don't think you can see the pearl barley. Let me... Um, let me get my ugly mug out of the way for a second here. Pearl barley, oatmeal, sweet dough, wheat grains, semolina. I would say pearl barley, sweet dough, semolina are all three very important. Garlic dough is huge to be able to make so much silver off bream, often garlic dough. Cheese for, for eel, tench, uh, big roach sometimes. Cottage cheese dough is really hot at times. Pea porridge is hot at times. Um, the list goes on and on. Egg dough sometimes is good. And then finally you get to 50%. You can cut up fish into fish meat and then use those, uh, those for bait, which can also be really good. So you want to get on that as soon as you can if you're going to be doing, especially if you're going to be doing a lot of feeder fishing or float fishing, then you really want to get on that. But until we can afford the shovel, I can't really show you um, how that goes. But if we can afford the shovel after doing some fishing this episode, we'll be able to do that. If not, I feel confident by next episode, we'll have a shovel. But you're going to need a lot of tea to do this, to keep that energy up. And then eventually you'll probably want to get the tool you need to make coffee. Coffee and tea can work together to even increase it faster. Um, and then as you level your cooking up, you can also make different foods. That's a nice roach, by the way. 717 grams. I like that. Make a lot of nice food so your poor fisher man or fisher woman isn't just starving. You don't want to be starving all the time. And we're about to hit level 10 off all these nice fish we're uh, catching here. So I wanted to show you one other thing. Now that we have the tea kettle, we can boil these eggs. Now I'm only going to boil one because the idea is you want to start with the highest thing on the on the menu on the uh, on the list because 
as you get higher levels, you'll want to do what the like the last thing you can do on the list, the lowest thing. So it's, that's like the highest rank thing. That's what seems to have the highest chance of giving you points, right? So it doesn't make sense to make a bunch of sausage and eggs before we've gotten a lot of points off tea. In fact, I would argue it might be worth just making as much tea as you can stand to spend silver on until that's no longer giving you points because over the course of time, you're going to need a lot of tea. Okay. I like the look of that crucian. Look at that. Anything over a kilo when it comes to crucian and gibbles, those are some nice, nice fish. And if you notice, pretty much every fish we catch on a feeder because we're so low skill level on feeder fishing every fish we catch is pretty much giving us giving us a point so let's uh let's make some more tea and uh in fact let's make as much tea as we can I'll tell you what while i'm doing this tea i don't know if it's as loud for you as it is for me but i think it's uh effects that governs that let's see if that's right yeah that's much better you know what at night in this spot where we're fishing with bread um it's probably worth having worms or maggots on at least one of those lines. I'm, I'm sort of remembering. It's been a little while since I've fished this spot. I think that the bite rate is actually better on bread during the day. And then um, picks up a little bit with like uh, worm. Like some of the, the meteor. All right, there's level 10. Some of the meteor baits at night. Uh, but I think I want to put uh, worm over here on this one, the weaker one, and just kind of see how that goes. Let's let's test that theory. We'll see if it seems like. Um, let's reel that in a little bit. We don't want to be too far out there. We could probably do six meter clip instead of seven. I'd probably be more comfortable with that. And you can. Uh, hardly hear the bells because I've got the volume on the effects turned down low so low. We're already getting a nibble on one. Let's finish our tea off though. So we've got, oh, is this the last one? Yep. Okay. And next time we cook, I'll probably start with tea again. Again, just continuing to see how many points we can get off just tea and then go from there. All right, so we have 21 silver. We could also just throw our float in just for fun in that spot, since we don't have a third feeder ride yet. And we will get a third feeder ride, but we're gonna prioritize getting the shovel and probably the landing net first. Uh, I think it's just a good habit to get in to get your net so that you can land heavier fish with ease and also the shovel as soon as possible. So the shovel is 38 silver, that's what we're saving for now. And the net is gonna be 27 silver. So that'll probably be what we save for soon. Just trying to see if we have any more orders that we might end up getting close to. Um, we might fill that crucian order. It's possible. We're definitely not catching a trophy tench here tonight, I don't think. And this is just more my comfort zone. Feeder fishing. We're done. 
see those big crucians we're getting. I think it's worth having bread in. Um, if we had three lines, for sure, I would keep one with either bread or semolina or whatever. All right, we don't want background too high, but effects we definitely want higher so we can actually hear the fishing we're doing. All right, so this is our first fish off worm. Um, we might get smaller fish on the worm, but that's okay. We just want to see that high bite rate so we can level up our feeder fishing, right? So we did get another point, another skill point when we uh, hit level 10. And I'm going to go ahead and put it in fishing with a feeder rod. We want to have as good of casting accuracy. For some spots, distance is nice. But the most important thing here is that control of fish. That's what we want to see is that control of fish. All right, uh, let's see. What do we have on? Let's go with... Yeah, we definitely want a very small hook and uh, we can try maggots, sure. Um, and let's do like 85 and we'll just try to keep an eye on it. We're not gonna sweat the float because you know, who cares? But if it's an obvious bite and we can grab it, we'll do it. And there are a lot of spots that we can try at Mosquito, and that's probably what we'll be mostly doing over the next few episodes, is just really checking out a lot of spots at Mosquito. And uh, this is definitely one of those spots we wanna check out. And as we unlock new baits, like as we get Pearl Barley and Semolina and other stuff, how good these spots are will change too. They'll just get better and better. I think I have that at 85 centimeter depth on the float. We could probably go to 90 and it'd still be pretty good position if we can get it into that spot, basically. And again, we want to be leveling up ground bait. We'll spend a lot of silver on leveling up ground bait and bait harvesting. Uh, even at times when it's like, man, shouldn't we be saving up for gear? Uh, we will still prioritize. There's a nice, another nice roach, and that was on worm. We will still prioritize leveling those things up. Okay, the other thing we can do is we can start making bread. We'll use a lot of bread at early levels um, and it levels up our bait harvesting, which is just huge. I think it's d arguable that before you start digging with a shovel, maybe go ahead and get as many points as you can off of bread, which probably means you, know, you could make a ton of bread um, I know with shoveling, you definitely keep getting points into like past 30%, but it does get more and more rare. I think bread, you stop getting points way before that. So, um, so we had a fish on there, pretty decent bite, but again, I am not sweating the float. Only reason why it's even in the water is because we don't have a third feeder. There... Some people may love it, um, but for me, there are a few things as annoying as float fishing for crucian and gibbles and roaches. They have such slow bites, they nibble forever. And um, it's, again, it's just not, to me, it's not very fun and it doesn't feel very efficient. I really hope that uh, 
some point while we're doing this series, I really hope that the Chinese sleepers will start biting really good again. If anybody finds out a really active Chinese sleeper spot, let me know. Still getting pretty fat crucians here. We should, there, once it's really daytime here, we should see an uptick in the bite rate on the bread to the point where we'll probably, ooh, I could have sworn that fish was on there with the line and everything. To the point where we'll probably want to put bread on both for now, to be honest, but I think it's still a little early for that. Maybe around 6.30, 7 a.m. we'll switch to bread times two. I didn't mean to pick that up. I was trying to pick up my float. I think I just ruined two bites in a row there. Oh, it's still on. It's all good. We'll probably make more bread than, than we could ever use, but... It's just worth it. It's such a cheap way to level up bait harvesting. Shoot. Okay, it's on there. Thought I'd picked it up too early again. Yeah, nice crucian. Now what you'll all what you will see though is during the day those like Real fat, big crucian will turn into like much smaller, small, you know, much smaller fish. But it's still such a good place. The bite rate is good. It's such a good place to level up your bottom fishing. And as long as some percentage of them are markers, we're good. We're happy with it. All right. This fish is just begging to be caught. Uh, let's see. Four trophies. Good job, Igor. Javier Piranha. All these are new folks in the chat channel. My dog's chat channel. Yeeter21. Welcome, everyone. All right, so we've made all the bread we can make. We have um, made all the ground bait we can make with the ingredients we have on us right now. See, that same process that's happening on the float right now is also happening on the feeder. But the feeder is going to hook the fish itself. Uh, we have to, you know, worry about on the float trying to time it right. Feeder just hooks that fish. Look at that marker bream, though. So strange. This spot is really interesting. That's more of a normal size crucian you see in this spot during the day. Uh, and sometimes much smaller.
just shout for joy with this dadgum float fishing. I really don't even know why it puts it why I put it in. It brings so much irritation to my life. Okay, so let's go check the cafe orders and just see what it's looking like silver wise. I don't know if we're going to be anywhere near being able to get that shovel, but uh, just in case we can, we can finish this video out with some digging while we're seeing how the day, how we transform into this spot during the day. The other thing we're going to want to do pretty soon is buy some hooks. We just need some hook varieties. Um, so we can do this, this rough, this roach order. How much time do we have? Two days. I think arguably we want to wait. It's 10 silver. Um, six. For 23 silver such good I mean guys just focus on the cafe orders um, yeah that gives us enough silver to buy the shovel so let's hold off on that roach order until we see exactly what sizes we're gonna have All right, I'm so glad we were able to do this in this episode now we just have to get our um, our comfort and energy up which we should be able to slowly do with the tea uh, comfort will definitely come up faster with alcohol, which is eventually why you want to craft um, where is it? Mold wine at 30% cooking, which you can be there in no time if you really spend a little bit of attention on cooking, but um, you really want to start making mold wine because it'll help a ton when it's raining. So let's see what this what bread got this time. Not quite a marker. So our, our hope is that even during the day here we'll still get a reasonable amount of markers. Um, may or may not happen, but that's what we're hoping for. Alright, uh, so we're going to try something here. We're going to put on the smallest hook we have and we're going to put flies on. Now, I, I keep forgetting you weren't with me. We're going to go to the lowest depth, which is 17 meters. You weren't with me during the, uh, the, the last episode that, that I ended up not finishing and just kind of uh, deleting. But I did purchase flies at Winding because they also work for bleak. So I was just kind of comparing those to the maggots, but I'm putting them in here because I'm just curious if there are bleak here. I also think we're so close to the lilies. It's always possible a frog could come up and, and grab it, which could be interesting. Um, anything to not have to watch those crucian gibble bites that we've been seeing. I guess the other thing that flies might catch are like really small roach. I don't know. Hey, this is a really decent fish here, guys. Really decent fish. Look at that gibble. It's a beautiful fish. 1.2 kilo fish. I love it. So I'm keeping this... Uh, I am keeping this clip at 7 meters. Uh-oh, another nice one. This spot is so good. It's 8 in the morning and we're still catching really nice fish. 1.5 kilo. I was trying to hurry because there was a fish on there. Let's see if we can catch this on this fly, whatever it is. Did we get it? I can't tell. They're so small, these little bleak. Yes, we did. Interesting. Okay, maybe this is an okay spot for bleak. What do you know? Hey, that's much more enjoyable than going for crucian and gibbles on float. Um, so that was a really nice crucian. 1.5 kilo. And that was on worm. So we're still getting some good fish here. Uh, you see our comfort level is slowly coming up. So is our energy level. Oh, we're 
about to get another one. Something. Something small. I, I think I pulled that wrong. Yeah, I did. So that means that if flies are working here, maggots might as well. We could probably catch the, the bleak old maggots here as well. That's cool. That's good to know about. That is a fast bite right there as well. Did we get him? Yeah, I think so. Man, that's a marker bleak, ladies and gentlemen. That is a marker bleak. Thank goodness we have something to float fish for that I can actually handle without going crazy. We're even going to be able to see it like that. I wanted to catch another fish here. All right, our energy level continues to rise. We're going to be able to start digging here, which I want to show you that and how you set that up. But I also keep talking about the clip here, and I realize I haven't in this series yet showed you how to set a clip. A clip is when you control how far you want your, your rod to go out. You can set a maximum clip so that it will always stop at a certain point. Oh my goodness. I don't even know where it went. I'm just going to pull straight up and hope for the best. Look at that. Look at that frog. Cute little frog. They're not worth anything. Uh, even the marker frogs, unless it's really nice, aren't worth, worth hardly any, not even a piece of a silver. But later on, you can turn those into bait and they catch some nice burbot, especially. All right, so I'm gonna turn the clip off. How you install a clip is simply hold down control and do plus and minus to go to different meters for your clip all right bottom right hand side of the screen you can see it we're going to go to seven meters uh, it's very similar to the way that you change the depth on a float except you have to hold down control while you're doing it all right cute little fish down there trying to get our bait i think that's actually a little small roach unfortunately so let's don't worry about him right now let's see what's on this feeder line I almost would rather just keep the fly instead of catch a roach that small. All right, another nice roach. And again, I bet, you know, we have caught some really nice fish here. And remember, we've turned some cafe orders in too, so that's where some of our shit fish went. Um, okay, good. We saved our bait from that roach. We don't want to catch roach. We want to catch bleak. Or frogs and I think there was a bleak order I don't know if it was any good I think it was the far left one so that means it's not worth much um, so it's probably for non marker bleak but let's just go look at it because I don't know how much time it had left Yeah, two bleak for seven silver. It's not bad. Let's go ahead and turn that in. Um, we're totally going to be able to get that roach order. We're not going to get that one most likely. We haven't seen sleepers over there. If we keep worms on during the day, we might start seeing perch, but I'm not really worried about that. So now that we've got the shovel and we've got some energy, our comfort's up, let's talk about digging. The shovel's in our inventory because we bought it from the workshop or the store over there. Neither line is moving, so I'm just not 100% sure that there's a fish on either one. Oh, first line's moving. So if you hold down U, this is how you set up your uh, what shortcuts you want your rigs to, one, two, three. You can also do your shovel down here in four or five. So we're going to put our shovel in four. Which means as long as we're not holding a rod or um, 
one of our uh, rigs in our hands and we hit the number four, we pull out the shovel. If you left click, you will then dig into the sand. And we just got a worm. In fact, we got eight worms. And you see how our bait harvesting went up. So that's what we wanna be, we wanna be doing that like crazy. If you also notice that our energy just disappeared, a little bleak is just hanging out on our line down here. And our energy, because we have drank that tea recently, should continue to go up. If we need to drink more tea, we will. We'll be cooking so much tea. We don't mind wasting a little tea just to stay on top of the digging. That's a nice crucian. It's really good when this spot is like this and, and we're actually still catching pretty decent fish occasionally during the day. It means that this spot is like almost a 24 hour spot at that point. That looks like a really small roach, I guess. Doesn't look like a gibble, it must be a little roach. It is a marker though, that's nice. Although these flies are worth, I think it's nine silver for 30 flies. So uh, after whatever we catch here, we'll probably switch it to maggots. See if we occasionally get bleak on the maggots here as well. Because whatever we're going to catch there, it's probably not worth the cost of the bait. We'll save those flies in case we're ever trying to get a frog cafe order. Or at some point, we may want to catch frog for um, trying to catch burbot. perch so it's daytime we're using worms the perch do start to show up a little bit hey there's a fish down there whoa it's like took the bait and ran that might be a nice froggy worthless but fun wait do we still have flies on all right, so we're not gonna catch any more frog by using maggots, but the hope is we will still catch some bleak. That is the hope. One day we'll be wealthy enough on this account to get blinkers so you don't have to listen to my bells ringing. It's a little roach. Hopefully the bleak here also like maggots like they do at winding. Okay, our energy's back up. We can dig again. So the problem in storms when your comfort goes down your energy won't come back up as easily when your comfort's low. That might be a little bleak, right? Nah, I'm wrong. But for whatever reason, these roach aren't near as annoying as the Crucian Gibbles on float that we were facing. And that's probably what is doing that right now. I don't see the fish, so I'm really hoping this is a, um, a bleak. Well, we'll never know. I should have just been patient. 
seems like when the bleak take it, they sometimes take it down for a little bit of time, so I probably can just be patient there. All right, we want to start noticing, and, and we're not going to just keep going forever and ever on this episode, but we do want to start noticing, like, when the uh, worms are starting to slow down a little bit, might be worth setting both of them on bread. I think during the day, it's just hard to beat, at a low level at least, it's hard to beat having all bread in the water. I mean, as soon as we put the feeders in, they both start getting bites. It's just constant. All right, we can dig. 2.6 on bait harvesting. All right, let's see what this is. Uh, I guess we can just keep catching roach for now. Not a huge difference in roach and crucian gibbles although if you're catching nice size crucian gibbles it's probably more silver to be made that way main thing i care about right now i mean it's nice to make silver of course but we're just trying to level up bottom fishing at a reasonable rate right now We should probably get like maybe 20 more loaves of bread and make a bunch more bread before we, you know, dig too high, get our level up too much. I think we've had a couple of, um, a couple of possible bleaks on here with maggots. I, mean, I think if they were roach, we'd see them. You see that little fish tying down in there? It's got to be a bleak, I think. I really want to be patient and really make sure he's got it. All right, he's got it. Yeah, it's a bleak. So we are catching bleak on maggot. Okay, that's good. We want to change this to the 14 gram quiver tip so it's a little more sensitive because um, we're pretty much just fishing for small fish at this point and we'll probably do some bream or white bream fishing rough fishing and they have a very sensitive bite so you want to have that quiver tip really sensitive for those type of fish all right we're gonna wrap this up shortly but let's check the cafe one more time Get some more bread, maybe make a few more pieces of bread. Oh, there's been some new orders, right? Another tinch order popped. Okay, we can definitely get these crucians done. Here's five non-marker crucians for almost 10 silver. And our five smallest roach for 10 silver. Very good. And yeah, if we stayed long enough during the day, we might get that perch the other thing you can do, if you just throw worms in off the pier here, into the hole there, you'll get uh, perch that way too if you have a reasonable hook size on. All right, 10, 20. Let's get some bread going just for the point, points in harvesting baits. Just want to expedite that, that's, that process. really nice fish on worms right now you know maybe this spots changing a little bit maybe we just 
Maybe it's worth keeping one rod with worms all the time at this point. We're seeing some decent fish coming on worms here and there. It's a roach. Okay. Some dig. There's our first red worm. We want to start saving those up. They're not always easy to find at low level lakes, just depending on stock. And they also can be a little more expensive for low level players, but um, in some cases they're really good baits to have, just depending on different spots and fish preferences. Crucian. We've really gone from nothing to 10.3% feeder fishing in this in this video. All right, let's make some bread real quick. Bread is so cheap, honestly, like along with digging a lot, I would just make bread till you stop getting points. I mean, if you start like going a piece or two without getting points and maybe it's you know start doing something else but until that happens like there's no cheaper way to level up um bait harvesting unless you're just willing to be really patient on digging constantly but Given us such a good jump start. I mean, we're going to be 5% now. And it's just nice. You finish making some bread, you come back, you've got fish on both rods. There's a nice little crucian. Obviously, you can also eat the bread, but since we do, since we'll do a lot of cooking, mostly I just want to use the bread to get these bait harvesting points. All right. So we have eight more ground bait on that rig, 10 more in that stack. So next, uh, next time we fish, we need more ground bait, probably need a little bit more bread to make bread. By the way, how much bread do we have? 872 pieces. We only have 118 worms, but believe me, that number will be going way up. 38 fishes, 38 fishes, 38 fish left even after turning in all the cafe orders. A lot of our silver here at Mosquito will be made off of cafe orders, but it's it's nice. You still get a good little chunk at the end with what's left as well. We have 25 silver. Thirty-six more silver telling you it's, it starts to add up it's really nice 10 20 let's get 20 more loaves we can eat for free we also want to get the ground bait so next time we can make ground bait uh, even if I forget And let's see. 
So we've got ground bait. We can do that. Um, really might be nice. I, I won't remember to do this at the beginning of the next episode, I think, but really might be nice to get like a, oh, 12s are out of stock. That's weird. We could check winding. We could also, I like these hooks as well. Well, and really we're going to want at least one eight. Let's get a 12 and an eight, start setting up things. You just got to have, you got to have the, uh, the hooks, got to have the, the hooks to, to really target different fish. Okay. So we're leaving this episode with only 30 silver, but we have got a lot of stuff going for us now. Um, I think we'll be able to start slowly kind of, yes, yeah, let's start aiming towards getting our third feeder out there. Things really pick up once you get that third line in the water and get your engine going. Okay. I think we're doing good. We're off to a good start focusing in on feeder fishing here. Um, we're, we're setting ourselves on a good path. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.